Planet Shakers is a global ministry that has grown from a small youth conference in Australia to now impacting every continent of the world. Through its church, awakenings, music tours and other ministries, Planet Shakers has a mandate to empower generations to win generations. And what happens many times is we, we value style instead of valuing the God in people, we look at the external instead of the internal. I finally understood John 10.10 10, where it says that God comes to give us life and life to the full. God has a great plan for our lives. Not only does He desire relationship, but He designed us with purpose in mind. In the Bible, it says in Acts 1.8, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It is His desire that you and I become kingdom ambassadors, releasing every kingdom benefit here on earth. We are a chosen generation chosen to show everyone what the Father's heart really looks like. Jesus did this on a daily basis. He revealed the Father's heart to everyone He encountered. Wherever He went, He released kingdom order. The blind were healed, the oppressed were set free, the dead brought back to life. Not only did Jesus perform these miracles, he said that we would do even greater things. I know that you've been purposed by design to bring heaven to earth, to release healing, provision and destiny, not only in your life, but in the life of others. You may be asking, how do we access His power? How do we live a lifestyle of miracles? What is the key to unlocking your God-given destiny? In this episode, we'll explore these questions. I'm Russell Evans, and I want to shake the planet.
Jesus, when he came, he talked about the kingdom of God. You know, everything you see, Jesus, he goes, the kingdom of God is like. You know, you, you hear a lot of people talk about the kingdom of God. The, the kingdom of God is, you know, like a mustard seed. The kingdom of God, everything I do, Jesus says, I do on behalf of my Father. Uh, and Jesus was all about the kingdom. He came to bring the kingdom. So I begin to think about a kingdom. What is a kingdom? It's a king's domain. It's a way a king operates. So the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, God wants to bring to earth because he brought Jesus to demonstrate how to bring that. And so his plan is to bring heaven to earth. What is, what is that plan? The way God operates, he wants what's operating in heaven to happen on earth. That's why he said, when you pray, what you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. In Luke 11, when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven. <laughs> Notice it doesn't start with our problem here on earth. Because <laughs> I've discovered when you start praying from your problem's point of view, instead of your Father's point of view, you don't come in faith. So this kingdom that Jesus brought it was amazing. You know what the Bible says? Heal the sick, raise the dead, cure the lepers, you know, and freely as you receive, freely give. And so this kingdom in operation, so I'm beginning to think, okay, God wants to bring heaven to earth, so what does that look like? How does that happen? What does heaven look like? What's heaven like? You know, heaven is a place of incredible joy. Heaven is a place where there's no lack. Heaven is a place where that, that people are, are walking free in their health. P heaven is a place of worship 24-7. Heaven isn't a quiet place, by the way. You know, the devil's trying to quiet the church down. Just be quiet. Have your nice little services. Just be quiet. quiet. Because, you know, what does a church represent? It represents what their dad looks like. So I reckon church should be the biggest party on the planet. I reckon church would be the place of more life than anywhere, better than a, a, a better than an a, a NBA game, better than a party. Church would be the most exciting place. You know, people have put reverence into being quiet, but if you look at heaven, it's not a quiet place, and it's the most holy place there is. <laughs> Around the throne, they're, they're, they're shouting, "Holy, holy, holy!" You see, uh, God, God made your body to worship. See, so you're a person. You go, gee, they're really smart in Australia. <laughs> person, the, name per, the word person is a Latin term. It comes from a, a Latin phrase, and it's sun is the back end of person. So sun means sound or sonic. That's where you get the, the word sonic from, sun, sound. So you're a sound. The word per means what flows through. So our lives are the sounds that flow through. Our lives. So Jesus was the personification of the Father. He was the amplifier of the Father on earth. He brought the sound of heaven through his life. That's what the church is supposed to be. It's supposed to be the sound of heaven on earth. When people at work are, are dishonoring the boss, what sound are you bringing? The sound of heaven is generosity. The sound of heaven is looking after the needs of the community. The sound of heaven is bringing breakthrough and joy and peace even in dark times. Psalm 23, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, mind you, it doesn't say, though I camp in the valley of the shadow of death. No, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, and, and then it goes on, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life as I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, God wants His sound to be on this earth, even in dark times.
this kingdom that Jesus talked about. I love Jesus, he was so cool. Jesus, Jesus wrecked every funeral there ever was. He wrecked every funeral. He, he, was, he just did things that were so unpredictable. Spat in mud, put it in a blind guy's eye and says, can you see? Think about that logically. <laughs> well, if I, I can see and someone put mud in my eye, I couldn't see. And, then, and he, he, he turned water into wine and, he, and he, he saw incredible miracles. He's just walking along and he'd be like a, a modern day rock star. People just wanting to touch him and he's walking along and a lady who'd been for 12 years pushed out of the society, pushed out of community, says, if only I can just touch the hem of his garment, then I'll be made well. And she pushes through the crowd and Jesus has all these people around him and he says, who touched me? Amazing. He walks on water. Incredible. Jesus wasn't boring. Some people say Christianity is boring. No, just some Christians are. <laughs> Christianity should be the most exciting lifestyle there is on the planet where we see miracles and break with this kingdom that has no limit, that has no end. Every kingdom has a key. There are keys to unlock heaven. So I begin to go on this journey and look at the life of Jesus and, and look at, okay, what, what's the key of the kingdom? There's different keys, but what's the key? You know, is it love? You know, God is love. Yes, He, he is love. And that's one of the keys to love the community. But the, the deal is if, if, if love is one way, then nothing will happen. See, the Bible says, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to whoever believes in him shall not perish but who has everlasting life. To whoever believes. So someone has to believe that he loves to receive that love. See, Jesus died for the whole world but the whole world hasn't come to know him. So God is love. Do you think Jesus, when he went to his hometown, would have loved his hometown? He, he would have known all the problems in his hometown. Jesus starts doing some miracles. I, I love the first miracle Jesus does. Turns water into wine and his mother comes to him before he's about to do it. And she, he said, she says, Jesus, hey, Jesus, they've run out of wine. There's some shame here. Can you do something about it? And he says this amazing statement that I would never use today to my own mother. <laughs> he says, woman, my time has not yet come. You imagine my mother coming to me one day and she's saying, Russell, the bedroom is untidy. Could you clean it? And I turn to her and say, woman, my time has yet, not yet come. She would be ministering to me for days. My mum was a woman of the word. We had scripture all over the house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. When I was naughty, she'd write, Children, obey the Lord. Obey your parents in the Lord, for it is good. And, and she'd even put scripture in the bathroom. Fear not, for I'm with thee. <laughs> that was just for my brother after we'd come in, right? And we had this stick with scripture on it. Spare the rod, spoil the child. <laughs> on the other side, we need thee every hour. <laughs> Woman, my time has not yet come. But as I looked at the life of Jesus and I, and I looked at what's the key to unlocking this heaven that he was talking about, this kingdom, I've come to the realisation love is a part of it, is a key, a part of it. But Jesus in his hometown loved his hometown, but they, he could not do a mighty work because they did not honour him. So honour must be a key to unlock heaven. In fact, you cannot get saved if you don't honour. If you don't honour what Jesus did upon the cross, you don't receive faith. Honour is the key to walk into the room of faith. Hmm. What does the word honour mean? 
The word honor comes from where they used to weigh the shekels. The, they used to get the money the, and they weighed them. Uh, it wasn't like paper, it was coins. And they'd weigh them. And the heavier that the, the shekels were, the more value they had, the more weight they had. So what honor means, comes out of that term. So what honor means is what you put weight to or what you value. And what happens many times is we, we value style instead of valuing the God in people. We look at the external instead of the internal. I had a really good upbringing. I grew up in Australia. I went to a really good school. I had a great family and life was really good. I grew up with a lot of different religions. And by the time I got to year eight, when I was 14, I was a staunch atheist. I was the girl at school that all the Christians were afraid of. I once made one of our religious education teachers who was a Christian cry. I would get the Bible and I would throw it on the roof just to be destructive because I just, I just hated God, honestly. I just didn't see why you should believe in him. and. I had gotten a lot of bitterness in my heart towards Christianity. So I had these friends from school that started going along to a church called Planet Shakers. And one day my friend Susanna thought it would be a good idea to invite me along. So I said to my friend Susanna, no way, I'm never going along to your church thing. That's a terrible idea. Why would I go along to something like that? And that was the end of that. Throughout the year, I then started to experiment with the things that you're meant to do as a 14 year old to have fun. I drank and I smoked and I went clubbing and I tried all these different things that you're meant to do to be cool and to have fun and to find fulfillment, but I didn't. And out of that year of experimenting, I decided, well, why don't I give church a go? So curiosity got the better of me and I went to my friend Susanna and asked, can I come with you to your youth group? To which she freaked out and was like, okay. I'd never been to church before. So when I went along, it was so different to what I expected. It was loud and it was fun and it was outrageous. And when they gave the appeal to know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, I went down the front. I thought, I'm gonna give this a go as well. And over the course of the next few months, I found myself there time and time again because God was working on my heart and he began to win me over to the point where I was able to fully surrender my life and my heart to Jesus. It was a journey of Jesus winning my heart over and I finally understood what it meant to have a friend in Jesus. I finally understood what it meant to be a Christian. I finally understood John 10.10 10, where it says that God comes to give us life and life to the full. That the experiences that I was seeking, that the things that I was looking for to find fulfillment and satisfaction and fun weren't to be found in the world, but were found in relationship with God. I'm now on staff at Planet Shakers, serving as one of the youth pastors. And I also oversee our high school's ministry, where we get to go into schools and tell young people how valuable, important and loved they are. I still have people coming up to me saying, I can't believe you are who you are doing what you're doing when I remember you as that crazy atheist in year eight who all the Christians were afraid of. What is awesome is that I'm just one of the thousands of testimonies of how God turned a life around.
honoured that you would join us today. Our prayer is that as you've watched this episode, you would be empowered and inspired to make a difference in your world. In sending Jesus, God's plan was to bring heaven to earth. It's a place of incredible joy and peace. It's a place where there's no lack. It's a place of no disease and 24-7 worship. The church is meant to be the sound of heaven on earth. Let me ask you, what are you declaring with your life? Are you declaring faith, favour, love, peace, joy, generosity? That's the sound of heaven on earth. Nicole is someone who is releasing the sound of heaven. But there was a time in her life when she was releasing a different sound. She was the last person anyone expected to become a Christian. But she encountered the love of God and everything changed. Now Nicole is playing a vital role in seeing people experience the love of God for themselves. You can make Nicole's experience your very own. Why don't you invite Jesus into your life, into your heart, and let him transform your life? <laughs>